Arr, go fish. Hi, Captain Craig. You can't always say that. All right. Go harpooning. Well, blimey, Captain, you can't say that either. That's not how the game works. Ah, a man can dream, little Barney. A man can dream. A man can also have terrible night terrors, like underwater rival too. The malevolent big Bertha. Wait, Captain Greg, do we have to hear another long speech? Twas a dark and storm-filled eventide when I first laid with me old craggy eyes on the big, the terrible, the Bertha. Ah, oh, yes, Bertha. Do pray tell, is this woman fish of marriageable age. I would hate to have a rival for the affections of a charming and eligible bachelor such as yourself. What did he say? He is a fool to the brim with wax. Is the lady fish of marrying age? Er, uh, well, I suppose she was. And you saw her and thought her befitting of wedded bliss? Yes. Well, she's a fish and I'm trying to kill her. So... Oh, Captain all, I should have known. He plans to kill the beautiful Bertha with his manly attentions. How shall I gain his affection? Shall I faint on him again? The last time I passed out on his head, he asked me if the scurvy had gotten to me. I said yes, for it was the scurvy of the heart that had... Everyone can hear you. What? Everyone can hear you when you talk about your weird feelings. What? Then they can. You're telling me that they can hear the deepest secrets of my bosom. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> no. This man tells a deep and terrible tale. For the 800th time, I'm not a myth, the man shouted, his hairy chin trembling. Hairy? Really? Really? Hairy chin? Oh, my gosh. Why is this hasty calm down? It's not worth getting your snow britches all twisted up over. Arr, he seems to be having a bad day today. Really? Yes. You see, today be her three-year shelf anniversary. Oh. No. I mean, it is, but I don't care about that. Blimey, how does that sound like you, dear? Well, I don't. So there. Oh, dear. You poor man. I'm so sorry to hear that. When I feel blue, I do a touch of needlepoint beside a dying fire while mourning my unclaimed maidenhead. It always sets me in a bright mood. Grr! <laughs> and I always count my teeth. Watch, I can do it right now. One, two, three. It used to be a more time come soon activity before I was scurvy. And I must be your mom and dad. Mom, dad. Say you! Save me! I've been digged down to spend my days with personal homes and the mail may not have hearts of gold! <sighs> I don't belong here. I'm nonfiction. Gripping nonfiction. It sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. Yar, I forgot. You were Miss Shell by old Doris, weren't you? Yep. If she wasn't so vain and put on her reader, I wouldn't be stuck here, turning yellow, wasting away with. Wanna be classic? Yar, words hurt. I'll have you know, I was called much more annoying than Oliver Twist, which basically means I'm better than him. And recently, my novel was described as just like a Jane Austen novel, if Jane Austen was allergic to quality and self-respect. <laughs> and everybody loves me dysentery chapter. Do not. Dysentery be a terrible disease. Which happens when you... We know how dysentery works. We do not need to hear it described in your poorly realized prose. Yeah, her. You'd be as rude as Big Bertha when she bit off me leg. She didn't even ask first. Or like Theodore Tottenflower, who rejected the used handkerchief I flung in his face on the eve of my sister's wedding. Or like when my parents abandoned me. Mom, Dad, is that you? <laughs> okay, I cannot stand this for one more second. I'm dying here. Mate, even if you want to get checked out, it's not all that good of a thing, you know? Lassie's got a point. 
Last time I was checked out, this young fella took me to school and left me in the bottom of his backpack for three weeks to a spool of old beef jerky. <laughs> I myself sat in the corner of the bathroom. Oh, the things that I saw. Blimey, they're spark notes. No, no, do not utter the dreaded name. Oh, spark notes. If I would ever see it, I would help pull it and help pull it good. As if spark notes could ever capture the truth of my shattered soul. They are not taught to a lie. That handkerchief had been besnotted by my family for generations. Spark notes can never know the misery of my abandonment. Mom, Dad. Or the terrible sensation, which is dysentery, which <laughs> happens when you stop forever. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes it just runs out of me. Like this entry. Oh, hush it! You disgusting hunk of seaweed. I feel so sorry for all you. You must be so sad that you actually get to go in the outside world instead of sitting here, staring at people doing questionable things on computer li library computers. <gasps> Last week, a guy came in and he did a Google image search on cat paint. Why, what was he doing? Why did he need to search cat paint? These are questions I have to ask myself as I sit, wasting away, on the wrong shelf. Well, even if you were to be checked out, there's nothing more to it. Kids just use you to write a paper about you. They don't even crack you. My spine is killing me. <laughs> Yarr. Or overzealous adults who try to, who check you out to make a, you know, New Year's resolution to be more well-read. But then they end up eating Twinkies and watch The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> or they check you out because they see your dark and brooding cover and think you're some kind of sensual vampire. People nowadays. <gasps> I have an epic story to tell. I climbed Mount Everest. I froze my butt off. Literally, they almost had to amputate my butt. I had icicles hit me directly in the face, like 97 times. I wrote a fascinating book about it. What have you done, Mr. Cat Pants? <laughs> Oh, oh, someone's ten pages. I want to look lively. Yeah, book about on the seaboard. Get your most interesting pages ready. Little Bonnie skulked down the alley in her gubby garments. Where are we going? She asked with a jaunty tip, tip of her hat. No, you need to know. Bark the old and ugly Mr. Cragglebed, his breath reeking of cabbage and old newspaper. Have you seen me, Mum and Dad? Little Bonnie bellowed and... Elizabeth sat up, her needlepoint falling off of her beautiful lap. Who goes there? She called beautifully, her voice trembling in a very ladylike manner. Tis I, <laughs> said a man. Elizabeth immediately fell rapturously in love and fainted on his head. When she awoke and realized again that he was a man, she fainted again. <laughs> yeah, I need another minute alone. <laughs> Captain Craig fell upon the john and dysentery. RIP through his body yet again. <laughs> this terrible disease is caused by... It had been approximately five hours since I ate the last food ration. Jim <laughs> had big, strong cats. What would human flesh taste like, I wondered. I grabbed Jim's leg, preparing to gnaw on it like a drumstick. What are you doing, Jim screamed. Getting sustenance, I screamed back, <laughs> and ripped my teeth into his snow pants, and ripped a huge chunk of... I mean, no, but still no. Yarr. Kinda sounds like you did. Well, I did it. <laughs> I just bit him a little bit. He wouldn't understand. It's some mountain climbing thing. All this time, I thought you were some boring old book just climbing some dull old mountain. B blimey. That's interesting. Really? You, you mean it? Ever so interesting. Do tell. Is this Jim? Eligible bachelor? <laughs> Did he <coughs> enjoy having his cat bitten? <laughs> Should I try that Theodore Taunton drama? <laughs> Yarr! I want the human flesh taste like! You think it'll help me with me scurvy? <laughs> Can't believe 
you've been stuck on the shelf for this long with something like that in your story. Really? Of course. Would you forgot all the support of your cannibalistic parents? Yo! Were there any big, beastly fish at the top of the mountain? Did you see any mums and dads as you climbed? <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll tell you. But first, tell me, did Mr. Crackleberg have a heart of gold? His heart was more like raw eggs. And did you ever marry? I ended up married to the art of needle points and painting. And did you? Did you ever clear up that dysentery? Of course not. I died under John. <laughs> okay, I'll finish my story. <clears throat> So, I sunk my teeth into his snow pants and ripped a huge chunk of flesh. And it turns out that, yes, humans do taste like chicken. Oh. 